For those who don't know my story, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and I was on medication for almost 10 years. When I was 21, I learned something called The Secret and I came off the medication overnight against everyone telling me to stay on it and I had a spiritual awakening. I meditated for three weeks straight and my Tourette's disappeared and I created the podcast to simply preach about everything that most people have in their head but no one ever speaks about, which is what the twitching was. It was too many thoughts inside my head and now I have a platform where I can speak to people and they can get out what's in their head if you want to speak to me and ask me questions twitter now have this new feature called spaces where you can do a live call with me and ask me questions and speak to me so follow me on twitter yes king oliver and uh come and have a chat and if you want to follow me on instagram and see what stories i post also yes king oliver so i'm just about to do a podcast talk live with somebody called palm and she'll be joining any minute now. Any minute now. I only me on this now. She shall be joining. Pardon. She will be joining soon, so don't go anywhere. Any minute now, she'll be joining on the chat, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk with Oliver. Right, okay, she is ready to join. Right. Right, Palm, can you hear me? Hey. Hey, yes, I can. Can you hear me? I can. Right. Awesome. Um, so, any anything particular that you want to start with to talk about? What's on your mind? Ah... Uh... You know what? I'm doing a wisdom series. I'm listening to a discourse. It's my guru's discourse on one of the ancient scriptures. And it's crazy because there's just so many mind-blowing concepts that are not actually that mind-blowing, but then they also are, you know, like they seem to be like pretty common things that, you know, things like, okay, be grateful and, and behave as if you already have everything that you have and those things will come to you. But the thing is, you know, my, my guru, my teacher is enlightened. And so when you listen to his knowledge discourses, the situations that he talks about, like they come up in your life, like they manifest, they find ways. It's kind of like he creates situations so that you can actually learn what he's talking about. Let me give you an example. He literally said, so <laughs> it was a couple days ago. So we're, it's, a, it's about a 34-day um, series and, and we're watching every single day. So a couple days ago, he said, so he, he gave an example. I forgot what the lesson was, but he gave an example of, right, it was to be in the moment and do what is appropriate in the moment without thinking about like, oh, is this the right thing to do? Is this the wrong thing to do? What are the repercussions? Like, blah, 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 like all of those things, right? It's kind of like if a child falls, you're going to run and go pick up the kid, right? Like you're not going to leave him or her on the floor, <laughs> right? Thinking about, oh, should I touch this kid? Like it's not my child. Should I just wait for the mom to come or whatever, mom or dad? And so it's kind of like that behaving spontaneously in the moment. And then he talks and then he goes into to what people actually do is, you know, you start thinking about, okay, should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? You know, and then you kind of pause and you, you hesitate and then the moment is gone and you kind of lose that opportunity. And so he gives the example of a parent and a kid. So the parent says or the parent does what they can for the child to help the child. And sometimes they don't give the lessons that they need to, right? Like they don't tell the kid like, okay, you know, you should do this or you shouldn't do this. This is wrong because X, Y, Z, right? They don't speak to the child. And so... So then he says, you know, you try to be good for, you try to be a good parent, but later on in life, that very same child is going to turn around and tell you that you never told me this when I was young. And I'm not even kidding you. The other day, like yesterday, my dad, I was sitting at the dinner table with my dad and my dad was saying something like, oh, you know, you used to drink and, and whatever, like, who knows what you did? Like, I used to drink and I went to South America for a year and he said, well, you know, who knows what you did abroad? And I turned to him and I'm like, dad this is the wrong time to say this. 
if you cared or like if you didn't want me to drink you should have told me back then like what is the point of saying it now now it's like you know how many years later like what the hell is the point and it just and I couldn't stop laughing afterwards because I'm like this is exactly the situation like you know word for word this is the situation that my guru talked about in terms of you know to teach this lesson that you know even if it's hard like even if it's hard to tell someone that they're doing the wrong thing and you think well you know it's none of my business maybe i shouldn't care like i mean if it's the right thing in the moment then you do it because i mean you're still gonna suffer the consequences right my dad still had to listen to his child come back and tell him well you should have told me so sooner you know <laughs> like it's funny <laughs> yeah so um like like the, the the main lesson from that is we have nothing but now like that tomorrow is a man-made term time is a man-made term christmas a calendar is a man-made term all we have is now when the cows are in the field they're just eating grass now they're not thinking about anything other than oh there's a nice bit of grass over there i'll go to that bit of grass oh look, there's another bit they're literally present and um obviously most people these days they're so scared to do the wrong thing and the repercussions that will come from it and they're scared of being judged and people have no mind of their own to make their own decisions, such as, oh, if there's a dog in the car on a hot day, do I save the dog or do I smash the window, save the dog and then get done for criminal damage? That's a real story in the UK right now where someone smashed a car to get a dog out and then they got fined or went to jail or they had to pay for the damage of the car or be the owner forced them to pay for the car damage. So this person potentially saved their dog's life and now they've been punished. So it's like the, the people shouldn't have to think between wrong and right. It should be an instinctive thing in the moment. And people should just understand that this is instinctive. It's common sense. It's the right thing to do. But because we live in a life where everything is scripted to perfection and you can't say certain terms to offend people, we think of this um, world as just everything is perfect. And if it doesn't go that way, then there's consequences. Everyone's scared to do pretty much anything anymore. And it's a shame because that's what gives humans, that's what makes people human, this ability to be more aware than other species. And yet now we're falling into the trap of not being able to do things intuitively, which is what got us here because we're scared of repercussions from other people that aren't as wise so let's just say you have people at school that really are just children. They really have no idea how the world works. And they go on social media and they hear about political correctness and shit like that. And now they're starting to live their life like that. And they don't want to say anything to offend people. Can't say the word black. And just such stupid shit that they don't understand. But it's a touchy subject. So people don't speak about it. And then you live this world of where you think everything's an illusion. And what isn't there is there. And what is there isn't there because no one's saying what is there. So it's like people living in the land of, there's an elephant in this room, but no one said anything because people aren't sure if it's politically correct to call it an elephant, or is it an actually an elephant? Or maybe they're schizophrenic and they don't wanna admit to anybody that they see an elephant and um, there is an ele elephant there. Or maybe that's somebody's pet and they're blind and you don't wanna offend the blind person because that's their you know, their, their care of the elephant or, you know, no one says anything anymore because of how they think people are going to act. And the story of, you know, you, what, what, the story of what you said, and it's interesting how you literally manifested that situation with your dad in real time based on your thoughts as almost, it's, you can't even really say it's affirming what you're saying because you're simply just thinking it and attracting it. But it's interesting how that story came up at the dinner table. Um, and I'm a big believer in opening your mouth right now, dealing with the consequences that come from it mm -hmm. and address it later if it comes up again, as opposed to keeping quiet right now and then it coming up again and then addressing it. And then I'm saying, well, if it was a big problem then, why are you bringing it up now? So it's almost like this one step back, two steps forward mentality of, I'll just get the can down the road and then deal with it. And then before you know it, you've kicked this can millions of times and you've got too many cans to kick back because now all these issues that you didn't address then will simply come up. And in a relationship, this is crucial because 
when two people come together, whether it's relationship, business partners, you're two different people. So you're going to have to constantly realign your thoughts and beliefs. That's just the way it is. Even family members, as close as you are, you're going to have to realign yourself. So in a relationship where you've got two people from two different trees, because you're not blood related, you're going to have to realign yourself. And relationships end because people don't want to argue and they don't like confrontation, period. But what they don't understand is that there's a reason why this confrontation started in the first place. And if you don't address it now, it simply will occur again. And yes, you may have to go through a little argument in that moment every time an issue comes, but it will return and you're just going to have more issues down the line to fix, in which case you're probably going to want to run even further because there's more shit to deal with. So being present and facing the consequences of making an instinct decision right now is always going to be better than pushing the can down the road to avoid any bullshit now because later on there's going to be twice as much bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many things that you said that just that, you know, that I want to expand on. And that was one of that's one of them, right? Like the more that you avoid something, I mean, you can avoid it forever. Like you literally can. If you avoid something in a certain relationship that you have, it's going to come up again in a, in another relationship, right? It's not like you're it's not like by avoiding something you are permanently avoiding it. Like you're just exactly you're just kicking the can down the road like it's gonna show up again even if you don't speak to the this person anymore even if you know you had a falling out with a certain relationship that very same issue is going to come up again because i mean it's coming up for a reason right just like you said it's coming up to teach you something it's coming up to so that you can learn something and a lot of the times what people don't really get or embrace is that you know the things that come out of their mouth or the things that bubble up to the surface are things that need to come out like either you need to get them out of your system or that other person needs to hear those words like that's just how the universe works you know it's like words come up based on the situation and it has nothing to do with you right like you don't need to go home and judge yourself like oh why did I say that or you know why did that person say that like there's always something there right like whether that lesson is for you or whether that lesson is for the other person like that's not for you to judge right if something is coming up in the moment like if it's intuitively you feel like talking about whatever then talk about it right like you have to trust yourself and and trust what's happening and then not get attached to it right like let go constantly let go something that my guru says is you should you should he says you should die every moment so that you can be fresh now what he means is that by dying every moment he means like what happens when we die we let go right we let go of the body we let go of our our thoughts and what whatever's happening in our life we let go of everything and so that's what he says he says without dropping the body you should let go of everything else so that you can live every minute to the fullest right and and then kind of touching back on a concept that you talked about earlier this concept of right and wrong like who really defines right and wrong i mean think about it like who has told you what is right and what is wrong and how does that person know like why do you believe certain things are right and certain things are wrong i mean slavery used to be right at some point in time and now we think it's wrong now we we still have slavery in a form we just give a little bit something to make this person feel like they're not a slave like i used to when i used to work like before i became a coach and before i moved into this field i used to work as a nine to five engineer and i remember someone talking about prostitutes and they were like saying basically you know if you if you take away the stigma from the work that they do which is sex work you really just have someone who's trading their time for money And if that's not what we do on a day-to-day basis, literally all the time, then I don't know what we're doing, right? We're doing some work in exchange for money, right? So I had this concept in my mind. I'm like, oh my God, we're all just prostitutes (laughs) at the heart of it, right? We're just trading our time for money. So it's like, you know, really thinking about what is right and what is wrong and then erasing those concepts, right? Like, what's right is doing what feels right it doesn't matter if someone at some point dictated that this is the wrong thing to do right but you you have a certain nature inside you like your nature is to be kind and compassionate and you know sometimes anger rises sometimes 
unkind words rise but you know being with it being in the moment and, and just expressing yourself how it is is so important because otherwise these things stay with you right like this is how we build up like if you want to talk about uh, like karma and, and all of that like this is how you build it up right this is how it builds up by holding on to things okay and you know what there's no need to judge yourself if something quote unquote nasty came out of your mouth or or you did something that you regret like whatever let it go it's gone right like let it go holding on to it is what keeps you stuck you know a lot of people have the same sorts of thoughts that run through their mind day in and day out and this is why it's because they're unable to let go of these patterns right they they do the same things that create the same thoughts that create the same emotions that then become a part of their identity right they they start to label themselves as yo i'm just this type of person right and then that continues the cycle right so that so then you're going to say the same types of things you're going to act the same way you're going to embrace the same types of emotions and actually something pretty controversial that my guru says is that you know things like depression and things like all of those they're just tendencies of the mind they're just ideas and patterns that you've gotten used to and actually it's true any emotion that you experience can only last for a maximum of like two and a quarter i think the number was two and a quarter days and beyond that it will change unless you hold on to it and if you've created this habit of holding on to certain emotions of you know people become used to being depressed like people become used to being in that mode of being you know what i mean like you get so used to feeling a certain way that it becomes your norm right and and that is so deep rooted that pe- like you don't even see that right like it's so deep rooted you have to do the inner work for a long time to get out of that but it's really what it is right it's just a notion in the mind like i feel this way therefore i am this way and then you've defined yourself okay i am this way therefore i must feel this way you see how that's kind of like a symbiotic relationship right it's it it kind of feeds into it on both sides and then how do you get out of that right how man that's about breaking the patterns and and kind of you know doing this type of work and and do, you know practicing yoga doing breath work doing meditation and doing all of these things to get yourself out of these patterns and erase the patterns so you never go back yeah it's like i know someone has got ocd and they say that that's who they are that's who they have been and they can't change and i say okay well how about get help i don't mm-hmm. think it will work so instantly they're putting restrictions on that person getting help so again mm-hmm. they are trapping themselves in their mindset and they're not even open to yeah potentially because it's their identity and they feel like their ego is saying you know stand stay true to who you are don't let anyone change you and they're not then they're forgetting the fact that you've basically been given the wrong dish in a restaurant and the waitress is trying to say madam we've given you the wrong food and you're saying don't take my food away from me and they're like no 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 but you asked for noodles we've given you a rice dish don't take my food away from me you know and they're not they're not seeing clearly and when you you know the label of the ocd is keeping them trapped mm-hmm. and yes it's their identity it's them but that came from somewhere they weren't born with it it came from somewhere and they can undo it simply by one being open to it being undone and two wanting to change and trying things to change but if people don't have that openness in the first place it is very hard to change and the other day I was at a restaurant and i came from a shitty area my parents worked hard to get me out of the area and we went to a pub in a shitty area and we had all these people that aren't our types of people we were called the rough lot and yes they're rough compared to me but when you think about what is rough and what isn't rough it's a comparison a comparison to what you already know or what you knew so i said if we never got out the area we would be one of them we would just simply they'll be our neighbors our friends our colleagues we wouldn't know any different and to say the posh people they would be seen as oh snobs but because i got out of that pattern i now look back at that pattern and we're like shit they're the rough lot but they're just human beings doing their own thing they don't know about rough and 
snob. They're just doing their thing. And so really, what is right and what is wrong? Everything's a comparison. There is thousands of tribes all over the country and some jungles, people eat humans. That's considered as right. Some people eat scorpions and massive tarantulas. We think, say in England, that's just disgusting. We, we won't even eat a bloody a, a, a fly, you know? If a fly lands on our food, we won't eat it. Whereas there's people eating tarantulas and scorpions and all types of crap. Um, everything has come from a small belief system locally that has expanded. And so when you think about, they would say that's wrong to them, but that's right to us. And you can apply that to anything in life, anything. And you realize there is no right and there's no wrong. It is just what it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people say they're colorblind. Well, what if they're not colorblind and people just see different spectrums of color? You know, the person who said this is blue, that's red, that's pink would have confirmed of other people, you know, what color is this? Blue, that's correct. I said that's blue, you're right. That's red, that's red, that's correct. But you've got 8 billion humans on the planet. You have, have you asked them? So if you ask them, some of them, most of them, maybe all of them, some of them, whatever, might say, oh, no, this dress is gold. And you're convinced it's blue, which makes you think, oh, is the whole world actually just simply seeing different things? Or are they colorblind, meaning the one you can see colors correct and the one who is colorblind can't? No, because you could say dogs can't see color. And so then you get this massive point of, well, if this one person made the word blue for the color blue, then that's just how we saw it. But you haven't seen how everyone else sees it. They literally could see blue as pink. Someone could see it as red. Someone could see it as green. It might just not be black or white. You know, is this blue? No, it's not. It's this. It could be millions of different colors that you don't know unless you ask everybody. So there's no right and wrong. It is just what it is. And that's why the world's fucked because there's too many influences and opinions all thinking they're correct and no one's right and no one's wrong. I absolutely agree. I mean, standardization, I don't really know. I mean, it, it has its purpose, but like mass standardization in the entire world is just asking for trouble, right? You create rules and then you have to create a ton of exceptions. And then you have to ask yourself, like, is this worth it? Like, why am I creating this rule? Like, sure, somewhere on the road, like, okay, you need rules. But in other places, it's not necessary. Like, you know, it's very limited, the extent of the purpose that it has. Hmm. Are you, uh, is that, are you, are you uh, thinking or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of like articulating this thought like, hmm. <laughs> okay, well, before I waffle on, uh, have you got anything else to say to that point or are you just going to let it come to you? <laughs> no, I'm just going to, just going to let that one go. <laughs> Okay, um, so, you know, you know it, in life, not everyone is going to appreciate your opinion, your wisdom, whatever you know. There's always going to be someone who will and someone who won't. And then again, there's no one's right, no one's wrong. If I speak to somebody and say, yeah, you can hear your OCD, if they believe that they can and they have and they know people that they have, great. That's completely normal. Someone who's come from the system, oh, you're born with it, you can't fix it, so that's just what it is. And if you say it can be healed, uh, that's your opinion, you know, respect mine, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so really, mm. who wins here? Do you want to live with this? No. Okay, so if I'm telling you that there's a, there's a solution, would you not be curious to find out how and why and how easy it was rather than just completely shun off the idea? And so now you have, what's the point of a wise person if they can't share their wisdom, right? And you could say, well, tell people who want to learn. That's easy. That is easy just to talk to somebody who's going to reaffirm your own belief system. Like, that's not healthy. Speaking to the same people who know the same shit as you means that you don't have any room for anything else. That's new knowledge. So there's times when that is good. But the bigger picture of, like, a wise man trying to empower people is you tell people who don't know that information yet and you kind of get a thrill out of persuading them or seeing the results that they were convinced weren't there that you knew was there. So you could say, well, that's a fulfillment. That is, that's what, that's what life is about. It's fulfillment, like eating something when you're hungry. It's fulfilling, like needing a shit and having a poop. Fulfilling. Telling somebody something that they're convinced is not true and then going at your way to prove them wrong. That is fulfilling. Yeah, you can change their life. But at what point does it come where 
you have to choose your people wisely to help. If there's going to be half the world who will listen and half the world who won't, you get instant gratification and affirmation with telling people who already know this shit. But at the same time, almost like a man chasing a woman, he gets the thrill out of chasing and she gets the thrill out of being chased. At what point does it come where If, like the, the whole point of this is to help people but when people can't be helped when does the I'm convinced I can help this person but I'm in pain now for pleasure later at what point do you choose to surrender but then if you do surrender it could affect you because they're not changing and you know if they did change life would be amazing but the fact that you put so much restraint and pressure on that person to change for the sake of a dynamic of you and that person at what point do you give up but if you do give up the strain's still there because the strain is the ocd this is a really interesting point and it's actually something that i used to think about myself like you know so i'm a firm believer that you know everyone like everything comes to you when it, when you're ready for it and so you know even if it's the right thing coming to you. If you're not ready for it, then there's no way that you can accept it into your life. And the same is true of wisdom, right? Like you can only, and you can only give wisdom to people who are willing to hear it. Otherwise you're wasting your breath, right? And, and there's something that's said, like there's a way that questions must be asked. Like questions must be asked in a way that, you know, the person actually wants to know the answer, right? You know, sometimes you can tell when people are asking questions, like they're just running their mouths, right? Like they don't actually care what the answer is. They're already preparing their next question, right? They're not hearing and absorbing. And, and in that situation, you know, the scriptures will actually tell you, like in that situation, don't waste your breath. Like don't share the knowledge because this person won't absorb it anyways. And if they do, they might absorb it in the wrong way and, and do something wrong with it. And so... So there's a very fine dynamic of like, okay, this person is ready and this person isn't. And what you should do as someone who is the conveyor of said knowledge is that you should, again, you should act in the moment, right? Like you do what is right as in you, you tell them, you invite them like, hey, you know, I'm going to be talking about X, Y, Z, or I'm going to be teaching X, Y, Z. And then, you know, I think you would really benefit from this. You should come. And after that, you let go, right? Like you let go when you let this person make their decision. And of course, you can follow up with them like as many times as you want to. I mean, you have to gauge their relationship and see like, is this person getting annoyed or... But apart from that, like there's really nothing you can do, right? You can't force people to change in a way that they're not ready to change yet. And, and when they are ready, then they themselves will come to you. It, it's a very interesting thing and it's also true you know coming back to that knowledge series that I was talking about that I was watching like it's a group of us it's about like eight or nine of us and, and you can see like in in some of the and afterwards so after we watch we kind of sit together and share our, our takeaways and you can see that some people like it, the knowledge goes completely over their heads and it's because they're not ready to receive that right like and it's the state of the mind and this is really interesting because if you think about your karma, right? What is karma? Karma is the cycle of life and death, right? Karma is your soul's evolution over time. And, and t you know, the human lifespan is very, very short. It's like a drop in the ocean. Actually, after you die, like your inner faculties, which is your mind, your intellect, your ego, your memories, so on and so forth, like all of that will go on with you to the next lifetime, right? So that's why certain people are born, um, you know, with certain things and other people aren't, right? It's because you're carrying your karma from previous lifetimes, right? You're carrying your, your good and your bad deeds and, and all the things that have stuck in your consciousness because you need to work through them. Like, it's not like you ignore, like, and, and you know, this is very beautifully touching on the first point that we talked about, about kicking something down the road and, and, you know, not getting to it. It's like, okay, if you don't get it, get to it, it's going to come back to you either in this lifetime or the next lifetime or the next. Like it's going to keep coming back until you deal with it. And, and so in the context of that, like if you look at your life as this overarching 
lesson, right? You just have to learn a bunch of things. And so if you look at your life on this scale, the cosmic scale, then you see that your life is always evolving to higher states of consciousness, right? To higher states of being. And so if you're not ready to receive something at a certain time, like it's okay. You're st- it doesn't mean that you're not evolving, right? If something is going over your head or, you know, you hear something and your mind goes crazy and your mind's like, that's not acceptable because I believe this and this and this and blah, 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 like whatever. The mind's going to make up all these excuses and do all these things and find an escape and whatever. If the mind is doing that, then that's okay, right? Like it's okay. It's, it's not time yet. And, and, you know, you're doing all the right things and by doing practices and, and by, you know, um, in Sanskrit, it's called sadhana and your sadhana is your practice. It's, it's actually, it's a very beautiful,